God knows us, right? And so he knows that if we do not get uncomfortable, there's a chance that we might never be motivated to move. Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Melody and I make faith-based content here on YouTube. I post new videos every single Monday and Thursday. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely be sure to subscribe. I would love to have you join the family. In today's video, we are going to be talking about signs that God is redirecting you. So I'm really excited to dive into this topic with you guys because this is honestly something that I am currently going through and something that I am learning in real time. So I've got a lot of experience here to speak from. But before we hop into it, I want to just note a few things per usual and then we're going to go ahead and hop into the signs. So first things first, I want to just talk about how God works, right? Like our journey here on this earth, we don't get the map quest directions or like the full playbook of every step we need to take in our life before we get to that point where we need to make the decision. So as much as we would want God to like give us the game plan for 30, 40, 50 years of life, that is just not how he works. It says in Psalms chapter 119 verse 105, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up real quick. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. So right here in the word, it's talking about how God does direct us. He lights up our path. He lights up the steps we need to take with our literal feet. However, oftentimes that light that he gives us is just for that one next step. And then it's something where, you know, 10, 15 years down the road of following Jesus, we look back and we can see, oh wow, there I hung a left, there I took a right, there I did a U-turn. So it's not necessarily a matter of if you are being redirected by the Lord, it's really a matter of when. So one question I have for you guys, just to take to the Lord and honestly to take to yourself in your quiet time, is just to ask yourself, when God redirects me, how will I respond? So. We're just gonna go ahead and leave that there and now let's hop into the signs. So sign number one that God is redirecting you is there's just this sense that his provision is no longer there. Or another way to put this is what previously was working no longer is. And now this can be absolutely uncomfortable, but it is a blessing in disguise. So oftentimes God knows us, right? And so he knows that if we do not get uncomfortable, there's a chance that we might never be motivated to move. So God uses this sense of uncomfortability when his provisions dry up to first and foremost draw us closer to him, but also to lead us to make that move into that next direction or that next season or that next phase of life that he has for us. And now when I think about God's provision drying up, I personally think about Elijah. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop up different Bible verses here on the screen, and then at the end, we'll read one together. But essentially, in the story of Elijah, Elijah is hiding by a brook. And as he's doing that, by the Lord's design and by his commandment, the Lord is miraculously providing for him. But at a certain point, the water dries up. And that's Elijah's sign that it's time to move on to that next season. It's time to be directed to that next thing. And for Elijah, that next thing was no longer hiding by the brook, but finding a specific widow and her son and going to her home. And as Elijah made that movement in the direction that God had for him, the Lord provided for him there. And so we too can kind of look at ourselves as Elijah. The Lord is going to have us in specific places for specific reasons and for specific seasons. But when his provision starts to dry up, that can absolutely be like a little light bulb going off that, okay, is it time for us to move on? Is it time for us to pivot into something different? And so the specific Bible verse I have for you guys comes out of First Kings. I'll go ahead and pop that up on the screen here. It's 1st Kings chapter 17 verses 7 and 8. Sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word from the Lord came to him. So again, provision dried up, the Lord spoke. So I hope this can encourage anyone who's feeling like God's provision is no longer where they are. Sign number two is that you have a certain sense of self-sufficiency. And so whether it's conscious or subconscious, you have this belief that I don't need God. And now the thing about this is sometimes it can be very subtle, okay? Sometimes we can feel like, oh, everything's going great. I don't really need to prioritize spending that much time with God because life is going good. 
And now this is me preaching to the choir because so often in my walk, especially in the beginning, I used to go through cycles of this. Something would be wrong, I call out to God and cling to him. Then things get a little bit better, the water is kind of even out, and then I'm kind of off doing my own thing and not prioritizing spending time with him. But then something will go terribly wrong and who am I crying out to? The Lord. And now the thing to note here is that every time I went through this cycle, God never shamed me. I was never made to feel guilty. It was all a learning lesson. And the thing with God is he's a kind and loving God. He's gonna welcome us back with open arms. So there's never meant to be this sense of shame going back to him if you are finding yourself on a similar cycle. And oftentimes when there is this self-sufficiency popping up in our life, this is a sign that the Lord is going to be redirecting us because God wants us dependent and reliant on him. And so he's going to redirect us into that next phase of life, that next season, the next opportunity, or just that next direction that's going to cause us to leave behind self-sufficiency and to cling to him once again. Now the Bible verse I have for you here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up on the screen. It is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. It says, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So as it's written here, you can see that God is in all things. And we can expect a redirection from him when we are acting as if that is not the case. So that is going to be number two. All right, guys, our third and final sign that God is redirecting you is there is unease, there is doubt, and there also is this sense of being stuck or feeling like you are at a roadblock, especially if you have been trying something new. And now when it comes to this sign, I first wanna point out that God has gifted us women with our emotions and with the gift of being very in touch with our emotions. And so undoubtedly, he's going to use our emotions, one, to get our attention, but two, to also redirect us when it is necessary. And now another thing I wanna note here is when you try something new and you feel like, okay, this is what God has for me. I'm gonna become a painter. And then all of a sudden you're on this path to become a painter and two years down the line, you feel like God is pivoting you into finance. And you're like, oh my God, did I not hear God correctly? I thought he said I was gonna be a painter. Now he's telling me I'm gonna be in finance. I just wanna pause right there and encourage anyone who might be going through something like that. I know I have absolutely gone through something like that. If y'all know my testimony, then you already know, but God uses everything. And so you might not even be aware of the ways that you are picking up skills by being a painter that are going to prepare you to excel in finance as he's pivoting you there. And it is all a part of his plan and all a part of the process. So don't feel like you didn't hear from God correctly and don't feel like you made a mistake. The Lord is truly ordering your steps and he's working everything together for your good and for his glory. Now, when it comes to the sign, I'm gonna pop up the Bible verse I have for you here. It is from Ephesians. It is Ephesians 5:15 through verse 17 and this is the amplified version it says therefore see that you walk carefully living life with honor purpose and courage shunning those shunning those who tolerate and enable evil not as the unwise but as the wise sensible intelligent discerning people making the very most of your time on earth recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil. How good is that? I love it. And that is going to be sign number three. All right, guys, that is going to be it for me. These are the three signs that God is redirecting you. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And now, of course, it is your turn. So in the comments below, I would love to know, has God ever redirected your path? If so, what direction were you going and what direction was his redirection towards? I'm gonna be sharing what I recently have gone through in the comments below, so definitely take some time, leave a comment, share your experience, and scroll through and see what everyone else is saying as well. Per usual, I love you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.